we now study about duals of Hilbert spaces. So we have the following theorem. Again, it's called the Ries representation theorem. because it gives you a representation of the dual element of the dual okay so let h be a hilbert space let phi belong to h star then there exists a unique y in h such that phi x equals x y for all x in h. Further, norm phi equal to norm 1. Okay, so this is the, so we already saw that if you have y in h, then f sub y given by x comma y uh, in a product y gives you a linear functional whose norm is equal to the norm of the vector. Now we say that every linear functional occurs in fact in this fashion. So that is the uh, so proof. So if y is in h then f y of x equals x y defines a continuous linear functional and norm of fx by the cauchy schwarz inequality norm of fy sorry equals norm of y this we have already seen in an example last time okay so now we have to show that every mapping occurs in this way so if you take the mapping phi from h into h star Okay, namely y phi of y equals f y. So this is an isometry into h star. So the image of phi is closed, and all we have to show to show phi is on two. So enough to show. image of phi is dense since it's already image is already closed since you have an isometry so it's enough to show that the image is dense okay so that will complete the proof so you consider a linear functional Uh, let us say uh, psi on in uh, belonging to h double star which vanishes on image of phi to show psi is equal to 0 ok but H Hilbert spaces are uniformly con convex and therefore it implies they are reflexive. H is reflexive. Therefore, there exists an X in H such that psi of any linear functional f is equal to uh, f of X for every f in h star ok so if you take any f y belonging to image of phi so psi of f y is equal to f y of x which is x y ok so therefore 
So this implies that x is such that x y equal to 0 for every y in h. So in particular this implies that x x equal to 0 that is norm x square equal to 0 that is x equal to 0 and that implies that psi is equal to 0 and therefore the image is dense and consequently we have shown that uh, phi is on to and therefore the resurpresentation theorem is completely proved. Okay, so now uh, we can directly prove. So proof ab initio that means from first principles that uh, h is reflexive and resurpresentation theorem holds. In fact, we will first prove the resurpresentation theorem and then from that we will deduce that h is reflexive. So, up to now what have we done? We have shown that we use uniform convexity and the fact that uniform convex spaces are reflexive and from that we prove the resurpresentation theorem. Here we will now directly prove the resurpresentation theorem without using any machinery and then deduce in fact that h is reflexive. It is good to know both the proofs. So, let us assume that phi is not 0, not identical 0. If it is 0, then the 0 vector is there. So, we do not need to do anything. So, phi is not 0. So, there exists a u in h such that phi of u is not 0. So, now let us take v in h and then look at v minus phi v by phi u. You can divide because phi u is not 0 times u. Now, this belongs to kernel of phi because if I take phi of this, I get phi v minus phi u, phi v by phi u, phi u and phi u will get cancelled. So, phi v minus phi v will be 0 and so this belongs to kernel of phi. So, this means kernel of phi equal to m has co-dimension 1. Namely, it is the complement of that is one dimensional, it is spanned by a vector such that phi of u is not equal to 0. Therefore, let us take u in m perp, the orthogonal complement as such that norm u equal to 1. Okay. And now you put x equals phi u bar times u. I am doing the complex case always. So, uh, up to now in Banach space theory, I have said uh, worked with reals and then said the complex case is, uh, will be the same proof. And also, in case there was a difference like the Han Banach theorem, I made special mention of that fact. In case of Hilbert spaces, I will naturally work with complex numbers because there is this conjugation which always comes into play and it is better to check everything with if that is okay. And then if the real case will be obvious because you do not have to put the conjugate at all. Okay, So, we will always work uh, with the uh, complex numbers as the base field. Okay, So, if you have this, let us take, uh, so any y Uh, so, let me, let me, uh, I hope, let me not mix up the notation. So, there exists a unique y in H. Okay. So, I, let me put y. So, I want to call this as y. Okay. So, now let me write. This. So, now if you take any x belonging to H, then x can be written as m plus uh, which is in the kernel plus uh, something uh, some alpha u okay alpha u plus m okay x equals m plus alpha u so now let us take x comma y this equal to m plus alpha u times y which is phi u bar u now, m and u are orthogonal because m is in the, uh, u is in m perp, m is in m, so m is in m. Okay. So, 
therefore that is 0 so you get equal to alpha times phi u bar will come out as phi u times u u which is equal to alpha times phi u which is phi of alpha u which is also phi of alpha u plus m because m is in the kernel I can add it and that is precisely phi of x. So there exists always this. Okay, the uniqueness I did not prove. I should have done it even there. So uniqueness we always have. Namely, suppose you had two elements. You have x y1 equals x y2 equals phi of x for all x in h. Then you have x y1 minus y2 equal to 0 for all x. So you put x equals y1 minus y2. So you get norm of y1 minus y2 whole square equal to 0. This implies y1 equals y2. So you always have a unique uh, vector. So, so this proves the Ries representation theorem. Namely, every uh, continuous linear functional in fact. So we have even identified what is that vector. So you have to take a vector, unit vector in the one dimensional complement, orthogonal complement of the kernel and then you just put phi u times u. So you may have some doubt that uh, since it is one dimensional, uh, there will be two vectors u and minus u both with norm 1. But then if I take phi u times u or phi of minus u times minus u, it is the same. This is equal to phi u times u. So this vector will not change. So the uniqueness is not contradicted. Okay. So now let us prove the reflexivity of this thing. So now before that, let me look at the map x going to phi fx. Okay. So then if I take f of alpha x plus beta y times z. So that is z inner product alpha x plus beta y which is alpha bar zx plus beta bar zy. So that is equal to alpha bar fx plus beta bar fy acting on z. So f of alpha x plus beta y is alpha bar fx plus beta bar fy. So this is a conjugate linear map. It is not just a linear map. Okay. So now we are going to define. So we have h then we have h star. Now h star we are going to give a natural uh, inner product on this. So define an inner product. on h star. So any element of h star is of the form fx. So we have fx and fy I am going to define as yx. Okay, so we want to check that this defines takes all the properties of the uh, inner product. So let us take fy fx this is equal to xy which is yx conjugate and yx is nothing but fx fy conjugate and therefore that property is true. Now what about linearity in the first variable? Okay, So what about fx fx this is equal to xx which is norm x square which is norm fx square we know because we know that the Ries map uh, so this is called x going to fx is called the Ries map. and that is an isometry and therefore you have this. So we have now check about the linearity okay, in the first variable. So uh, it will be conjugate linear in the second variable automatically because of the conjugacy condition here and therefore we have to take alpha fx plus beta fy fz. But this we just saw from this, this is nothing but f of alpha bar x plus beta bar y fz which is equal to z alpha bar x plus beta bar y which is equal to alpha zx plus beta zy which is equal to alpha fx 
plus beta f y acting on cell and therefore alpha f x plus beta f y so we is nothing but alpha times f x z uh, f z sorry sorry uh, wait a minute So this is nothing but, uh, yeah, this is Fz and then here you have alpha Fx plus beta Fy. Fz plus beta Fy, Fz. And therefore, the distributive law linearity in the first variable is well defined. So therefore, this defines a genuine inner product on the uh, space. Okay, so now again we can define, so H star is therefore a Hilbert space and therefore you can define an inner product on H double star in the same way using the Ries map. Okay, so now we have two maps. Uh, now, Ries map is always on to. So, now we have two maps going from H to H double star. One is the canonical map X going to J of X. What is Jx? Jx acting on any F is nothing but F of X. This is the evaluation map. So, this is one map. The other map from H to H double star is uh, X going to F of Fx. Okay. F of Fx is a Ries map between from H star to H double star. Fx every, uh, so, okay. So, we have two such maps. Okay. We want to show that these are one and the same. Okay. So, let f belong to h star, then f equals f y for some y in h, okay. So, f of f x acting on f is f of f x acting on f y, which is nothing but Fy, Fx in the dual space. So, this is the uh, inner product in the dual space. I, I, I didn't put, okay, let me put a star here, okay. And that is equal to Xy. Now, what about Jx of F? This is Jx of Fy which is Fy of x and by definition that is xy. So, these two are the same. So, uh, Jx is nothing but F of Fx. But we know that the Ries map is on 2. So, this means that J is on 2 and therefore, H is reflexive. So, we have shown that uh, Every hill starting from first principles, we have shown that a Hilbert space is reflexive and that the representation theorem is true. Okay, so now, uh, so if you look at the map, Ries map, f x going to f of x, this is a isometry and linear if you are working with R and conjugate linear if C is the base field. Okay. So, it is not a big deal if you have a conjugate linear map, but so in particular if H is a real Hilbert space, 
we can identify H with H star because you have an isometric isomorphism. We have been doing this repeatedly. In fact, we have already done it in case of L2, uh, Ln2, etc. and the space L2. Okay, All these spaces we have actually identified the dual. We have often used it like that. Okay, So now the question is can we always do it or should we exercise some caution? So there is, there are some situations when you should not blindly do it. Okay, so one a situation, a typical situation, is the following. So, so caution cannot identify all Hilbert spaces with dual. Simultaneously, when dealing with families of of Hilbert spaces, okay. So, so let me let me give you a typical example. So, let V and H Hilbert spaces. Okay, and so we have norm V and norm H as the norms, and then you have the inner product V and the inner product H. Okay, such that V is included in H, that means this is a V is a subspace of H as the algebraic set, and the inclusion is continuous, that is, V is contained in H and there exists a constant c positive such that norm v h is less than or equal to c times norm v in v for every v in h v in v 1 and 2 v in h is dense so it's a dense and continuous inclusion okay so now let us identify so v and h real hilbert spaces let us say h with h star via the rees map So we, we can do that, there is no harm. So the question is can I also identify V, so can we also identify V with V star. So the answer is no because of the following reason. Okay. So now let us take any F in H. Then consider V going to VFH. So what is mod VFH? This by the Cauchy Schwartz it's norm V in H, norm F in H, that is less than to C times norm F in H, norm V in V. So this is a continuous linear functional in V. So that means f belongs to uh, f. Uh, so v going to be f uh, generates a continuous linear functional, an element of v star. So let us call it T of f. So T of f equals T f acting on v is equal to v f acting on h. Then f going to T of f is one one. Why is it true? Because if you have uh, Vf1 equal, if Tf1 equal to Tf2, this means V of F1 minus F2 equal to 0 for all V in V, 
Okay? But V is dense in H implies V of F1 minus F2 equal to 0. This is H for all V in H. And if you put V equal to F1 minus F2, you will get F1 equals F2. Okay, so this is a one-to-one -one map. So we can consider V can be, uh, sorry, H can be thought of as the same. And norm of TF, from here we say is less than equal to C times norm F in H, we have seen that and therefore this is in fact a continuous inclusion in this. Okay. Now we claim that this is also dense. So we want to show that if you have a continuous linear functional phi in V double star which vanishes on H then we show phi equal to 0. So that will mean H is also dense. Okay, why is that so? Because, well, V is a Hilbert space, so it is also reflexive. So, that implies there exists an X such that phi of any F, uh, phi of any uh, F in V star is equal to F of X. So, that means for all F in H, we have Tf acting on x, uh, phi of Tf is Tf acting on x equal to 0. Okay. And what is Tf? Tf is nothing but that is x f h equal to 0. For all f in h. But then v is contained in h and therefore I can put f equal to x itself. So I get xx equal to norm x square equal to 0. That implies that x equal to 0. That means phi equal to 0. So what do we have? Conclusion. So if v is continuously embedded in h and this is a dense inclusion and if I identify h with h star, then I can embed, this is also embedded and this inclusion is also dense. Now, if I also identify these two, then that will be absurd because if v equals v star and you have h in between, then all of them are equal and that you, you know they are not. Okay, so it is not correct to identify. So, when you have therefore a family of Hilbert spaces which are connected to each other like this, then we use choose one space which we call the pivot space where uh, we identify the uh, space with the dual but all other spaces you will have uh, that the duals are same. So this when you study especially in the case of Sobolev spaces this will be the case okay. So we will have a Sobolev space called H10 uh, there will be spaces like this H20 contained in H10 which is contained in L2 and that we will assume is its dual and that will be H-1 that is the dual of the space contained in H-2 which will be the dual of the space and so on and therefore we will have a tower a whole chain of Sobolev spaces and their duals we will not confuse uh, H1 there is a Ries map when you want to only study these two, but when you are connect studying it together with L2, you must have only one function, one space which is identified and the other spaces should not. Okay, so we will continue with this.